Okay, our next problem is going to be y is equal to x minus 1 over x times x squared minus 1 over x squared. Same exact deal. Yeah, you've got first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, but because you've got these ugly, x, these ugly fractions, um, you need to rewrite it first. So rewrite it as the following. y is equal to x minus 1 over x. Well, actually, I don't want to have this 1 over x here. I have x minus x to the negative 1 power times x squared minus x to the negative 2 power. Make sure you understand this, and I kind of got these a little bit close. Hopefully they're not crowding out for you. So you have x squared minus x to the negative 2 in here. So you just basically convert it so it looks more like a polynomial. This is sort of the bottom line. Let me change colors here. But you work exactly the same way. So dy dx is equal to first times the derivative of the second, x minus x to the negative 1 power times the derivative of this guy, x squared minus x to the negative. 2, take the derivative, plus the second term, x squared minus x to the negative 2, times the derivative of the first term, which is x minus x to the negative 1, take its derivative. So now we just have to work with these derivatives. dy dx equals, this one leave it alone, x minus x negative 1, it just hangs out for a little while. Let's take the derivative of what we have here. The derivative of 2x, or I should say x squared, is 2x because the 2 comes down x to the first power because I subtract the exponent off. Minus. I'm going to have this guy. Negative 2 comes down and multiplies with this, making it positive. 2x to the negative 3 power. The reason it's negative 3 is because I subtract 1 off that exponent. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. The reason it's positive is because these guys multiply uh, one another plus, leave this alone, x squared minus x to the negative 2, and here I take the derivative. The derivative of x is just 1. The reason it's 1 is because the 1 comes down, which gives me this, x to the now 0 power, it just disappears. Now, next term, negative 1 times this is going to give me a positive, uh, let's go ahead and write the 1 for right now, x to the negative 2. The reason it's negative 2 is because I subtract 1 off. Now, I don't really have to write this 1 here, but it's okay. I'll just leave it there. So this guy multiplies gives me positive 1, x to the minus 2, because I subtract 1 off. Okay, now dy dx. What am I going to do next? Let me go ahead and switch colors, just to break it up a little bit, because it's starting to run together a little bit here. Uh, the next thing I need to do is just basically, well, there's a lot of ways you can go about it, but I would recommend doing FOIL here, and then FOIL here, and then just collecting your terms and see where they fall. So let's go ahead and do that. 2x times x is going to give me 2x squared. The inside terms, 2 times that negative 1 is negative 2, times x to the, here you have a negative 1 plus 1, so it's going to give you 0 power. Now if you're in a rush, you might just say, well, it's 0, I'm going to leave it out. But I like to leave it this way, that way if I make a mistake, I can go back and trace where I found it. So negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. Now the outside terms, 2 times 1 gives me 2, x, I add these exponents, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, okay? And then the final guys is going to be negative, because negative times positive, 2x, and I add these guys, negative 3 plus negative 1 gives me negative 4. So that's a pretty lengthy uh, guy here. So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses mostly so I can associate it with this, okay? And then I'm going to add to it on the next line the foil that I get from this. So 1 times x squared is going to be x squared, okay? Inside terms is going to be negative. This 1 times this is going to give me x to the negative 2. The outside terms is going to give me x plus x, but then I add the exponents, negative 2 plus 2, again, give me 0. If I were in a rush or more experienced, I could just leave, put a 1 there, but I'm going to leave it there. That way I'll know what's happening and trace my steps. Multiply these, it's going to be negative x, uh, negative 2, minus 2, or plus a negative 2, negative 4. So that is really um, all of the foil. A little bit of a, of a pain, but you know it's not so bad. So don't forget that these x to the zeros, they're really 1, right? 
and it just helps me keep track of it by keeping it that way. So dy dx, just to, to tidy everything up, uh, let's go ahead inside of each parenthesis and just simplify it as much as we can. So I have 2x squared plus 2x to the negative 2. I can't really combine those. I can't really combine those. So actually I changed my strategy a little bit. Since I can't combine anything in here, I'm going to write it all out and then we'll simplify it in a minute. So I'll have 2x squared minus 2, because this is times 1, plus 2x to the minus 2 from here, minus 2x to the minus 4 from here, plus x squared, minus x to the minus 2, plus 1, minus x to the minus 4. And that barely fit it on there. So now you really have to go through and just combine terms. And it just becomes tedious. I mean, you're not even doing calculus at this point. This is just algebra. So you see how I say, once you get past the derivative part, the rest of it is just doing some algebra. So you need to be comfortable with that. So the way I recommend doing it is just starting off with your square terms. Here's a square term. Here's a square term. Those are the only two square terms I have. So I'm just going to make it 3x squared. And I have color markers, so it's easier for me. But on my paper, I usually put a dot or something over everything that I've touched. Because that way I know I've, I've, I've got those guys and I can not miss anything else. I've got these negative exponents. I'll save those for later. Let me look over here. I have a negative 2 and I have a positive 1. Those are my only numbers. So I'm going to make this a negative 1. A negative 1, or I should say minus 1. And since I've already gotten those under control, I'll do this guy. Uh, like this, and I've got those taken care of. Now, the only thing I need to simplify are these. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll say, well, I have an x squared here, a 2x to the negative 2 here, and I have a negative x to the negative 2 here. So that's going to equal plus um, just simply 1x to the negative 2 power because 2 minus the 1 there is going to give me 1. So this is, I've simplified along with this. And then finally, I've got negative 2 times x to the minus 4, and then I have a negative 1. And when I add those together, I'm going to get minus 3 times x to the negative 4. So you could actually circle this as your answer. It's absolutely fine, dy, dx. But since the original problem had, had fractions in there instead of these negative exponents, I'll just do the courtesy of putting it back in that form for you. So minus 1 plus 1 over x squared, making it a positive exponent minus 3 over x to the fourth power. 3x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 3 over x to the fourth. A lot of work. I mean, pat yourself on the back. If you follow that, and I hope that everybody can follow that, and I think that everybody can follow that, then you're doing some really some real calculus here. I mean, this is no kidding around. I mean, you're taking derivatives of a fairly complicated looking function but you got to break it into step-by-step -step chunks. You do the, the rule, and the derivative itself is pretty easy, but notice that after this point, it all became algebra. And by the way, that's just the way it's going to be in calculus. So you're going to learn how to do integration. You're going to learn how to take derivatives of more and more complicated things. Doing that is probably not that bad. It's just doing the simplification at the end uh, that you probably won't get full credit for unless you do. So that's why I'm picking these problems that are a little bit more challenging as we go um, to give you a little practice with what you probably might see as a, as a good question on your exam or as a bonus question or something.